You can, hey, you can hear it. Now, I wasn't looking, but you can hear it go click. The wonders of technology. I'm still getting used to the fact that I'm here, and yet I'm here. But this is the same thing as TV. It's the same concept. Right? I'm not yeah. used to be able to see it right up here in our lap here. I'll get used to it, man. By the time I do, then the season will be over. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Lafari Lions, man, because they didn't look so good early on against Kingsville the other day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, and LaFerry's been one of those teams, I don't want to say they're slow starters, but they've always kind of had to put it together in the second half, and, you know, at least they're putting it together. 28 points in the second period, they came back and beat Kingsville well, now they play Hidalgo, 2-0, and 6-1, and one. now this Jonathan Leha has got 200 yards passing last week, and I told you from the beginning of the season, Brandon Pettis is a great weapon, he had a long touchdown catch, and he ran one in, but the other guy that's coming on is this Julian Trevino, they've got a good offensive team. Yeah, they really do. Now, you know, they didn't stand up well enough against Kingsville early on in defense, but I like that team, man. I think they have a chance to do all right. We were talking about when before we came on, you know, what team among the sub five A's has a chance to go really far? I'm not sure we can say Laferia yet. Although last year, remember, they won a playoff game, they set a record for points in the playoffs for them, and then they turned around and played China Springs. So they got to that, you know, that second tier, man. I don't know. Let's let them figure out the district before we start talking about their destiny uh, yeah. too much far down the road. Uh, they play Hidalgo this week, and quite frankly, it's been a, a long year for the Pirates, man. Do they have a chance to hang with the video? It, at home. It's a tough one. It's at home, um, but it, it, it's a tough season because they just don't have the depth. They don't have the numbers, and the talent in that district is pretty tough. Yeah, it is. And they're not scoring very much, and their defense doesn't seem to be that great. So, you know, all things are possible, man, but if you're looking for signs of life from Hidalgo, it hasn't really happened yet, man, lately. So, hey, maybe this will be the week. LaFerry has showed that it's vulnerable early on against Kingsville, so it's not as if they're, you know, going to win 100 or nothing, guaranteed not. Although I remember a score, I can't remember the year. It was in the 40s, I think, when Raymondville beat Ed Castell, so 102 to nothing. Have you ever heard of that game? No. Yeah, Ed Castell was a nascent program at the time, and Raymondville was stocked with college style athletes. You'll have to look up the year, and it's not trying to be ugly to Ed Castell, but yeah, the, the highest scoring game in Valley history, 102 to nothing by one team. Wow. Very silly. All right, Gruy is not going to score 100 points against Kingsville, but they better win on the road, follow up that win they got against Zapata last week. Hey, the Gators are right there, man. We've always liked their talent. Baby and Anzal Dua, one of the top 10 quarterbacks in the Valley. So, do they go and win at Kingsville? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's, with Gruy, it's very, very, it's almost, a, I don't want to say a sure thing, but it's a... Uh, yeah, they I, got talent. I'll give man. it to them. I give it to them. They got talent. They play a little bit of defense. Of course, Kingsville showed he can score against Lafayette, but it also showed that it's vulnerable to the quick strikes. And Fabian and Dylan Salinas and those guys can strike quickly, man. I like the looks of that team, and I have since I saw them against St. Joe. Zapata 0 and 2, 1 and 6, and they're off. They just don't have it this year, yeah. man. You know, you're used to Zapata being pretty good the last couple of years, and I don't think this is going to be the year for them. Such is life. We don't have to put up with that here. I wonder if there's anybody who watches in Zapata, though. There yeah, might be. Yeah. If, if they so set me up with a deer hunt, man. I'm not talking about your team bad. How about Rio Hondo? 2-0, 5-2. Incredible. Yeah, Incredible. Yeah. We're talking about a team who was underneath, well, under, underneath, they were underneath the radar. Mm. Nobody was even, like, thought they were, uh, you know, a blimp. And then all of a sudden, you know, you beat PI, you start rolling. And they I mean, you know, this is a team that, you know, we've seen them stock with talent before, and he's got some talent this year. Yeah, they do. They got playmakers. They got that quarterback's doing just fine. Defense is good. They beat West Oso by 24, and so right now, man, they're ruling the roost in that district. Them and Raymondville. Now, Raymondville, we had them with one foot in the grave a couple of weeks ago. They're 0-4. They scored 42, 43, and 42 points. They're 3-4 and on a three-game winning streak. They host the Rio Hondo Bobcats, and that's a game that I would love to see. Yeah. It, look, I mean, you're talking about a lot of, of – uh, Hometown rivalry. I mean, yeah. you know, it's not like they like each other. Mm-mm. And Raymondville, you know, they are one of those teams like Edinburgh North that all of a sudden they start putting it together, and now they are a contender for the playoffs. Ah, they're in first place, and they got Rio Hondo coming into town. What do you think of them apples? They got young kids all over that field. You talk about Mercedes with a young team, San Benito with juniors, some other teams you can talk about that have some young guys. Look at all these cats, man. Look at all the defense for Raymondville. Sophomore, Dion Castillo, Pulsas we talked about. Zambrano we talked about, Rudy DiJarinas and stuff. All these guys have 30, 40, 50 tackles, man. So they're making it happen uh, with young guys, even their receivers. Justin Oyola and this Javier Ledesma is a sophomore. So uh, Gutierrez, I think, is still a junior. 
that's a team that's supposedly a year away, but they've got three wins in a row, and so Rio Hondo better get ready to play, man. And, of course, I feel that that team will be, but that you're looking at one of the market games of the week. Yeah, and remember, Rayleigh still has some of the meat of their district to, to play. I mean, yeah. you know, you know th- th- this isn't going to be a – they're not in the playoffs yet. They've got to no. win this game and then, you know. Take care of some business yeah. because they still got to play Port Isabel. So, speaking of P.I., yeah. man, oh, look – when they went up here and beat Orange Grove like that, I was pretty happy, man. I mm-hmm. said, all right, good for them, you know. Yeah, because the Boo Birds were out after that loss yeah, to Rio Hondo. That's right, because the P.I., they like Ed Cows. They don't settle for nothing, and that's good. That's them. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, they, everybody was, you know, ragging on Coach Dumball again. And, yeah. then, and then he's like, all right, just shut up. Here, watch this. Yeah, right, here, here we go. And, and they go, and they, they pull an upset on a, on a tough Orange Grove team. Well, Orange Grove's only losses have been the top ten teams previously, so you have to like what P.I. was able to do. Uh, Orduna, the running back, is back and in good shape, I understand. They, of course, still have Omar Silva. Uh, Bodie's up to 60-something tackles and five sacks. And Jeremy, little Jeremy Martinez, 24. Mm-hmm. The corner's got four interceptions. They're playing good football. They're not going to make the highlight reel every two seconds. But it's a steady team. If they limit their turnovers, they will win. If they do not, then they're not going to, man, because it's not, they're not going to score 40 or 50 points. It's not like some of those PI teams of old, but they're a grinded-out team, and I really respect them, man. And, uh, you know, quite frankly now, so does Orange Grove. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of that? All right. They play Progresso this week and, you know, at home. And, uh, you know, like the like Hidalgo, Progresso has really not had too many shining moments this year. But, uh, you know. Hey, they got their one win. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. And now every week is a chance for that team to make progress. It's going to be tough against P.I., but not as tough as it was the year that P.I. beat them like 84 to 6. I will keep yeah. bringing that one up because it still amazes me. But I think, you know, this is going to be a, a more equal game. I Obviously, you think Port Isabel at 6 and 1 at home is a favorite. So let's just see. Let's see what the Red Ants bring to town, man. Hey, hope springs eternal in the breast of men. Orange Grove and West Oso. Now, we had Oso as a big team uh, three or four weeks ago, but I think that was more an indication of their schedule. Right, exactly. Yeah, they're not that good. Orange Grove's going to be mad. They're going to beat the death out of them. How about Monte Alto against Odom? Eh, Odom's yeah. the best team in that district yeah. by far. They beat Skidmore 54-18. Then who did they beat? Oh, they also beat London by 26 last yeah. week. Uh, this is not the game that you want to have to try to win if you're Monte Alto because Odom is the class of the district, and they've gone far in the playoffs the last several years. Now, with that said, Shock the world. Who knows? It's yeah. happened before. Oh, it happened last week in, in 5A. So, yeah. That's right, man. Now, what about uh, what about Lyford here? They play at Santa Rosa. This is a big game. Mm-hmm. I thought they played already. No, that was uh, La Villa and yeah. Santa Rosa. Okay. So, Lyford and Santa Rosa. They both lost the first week. Lyford goes down again. They lost a slugfest to this little Santa Gertrudes team, which yeah. is 2-0, and oh, and they scored 72 points. But Lyford comes around and beats the hell out of Bishop, man. That Bishop, and it was a team that early in the season was looking like the, the, yeah. the cream of the crop, and Lyford beat them 48-24. to 24. Outstanding win for them. Yeah. Didn't get any details yet. I'm going to find them on the max preps, but I'm happy for that one. Yeah, and by the way, coaches, uh, sometimes uh, you know, we're not able to go to your games, and, and sometimes we can't get the stats from the other entities in town. So, uh, you know. Put him on Max Preps. How can I tell you about Javi Gonzalez, the two-way guy, or Klosterman? It's all about Max Preps, man. Yeah, I'll run into coaches occasionally, but gosh, I mean, that's a great way to, like all the Raymondville kids I just told you about, man. I'm learning about those guys from those videos and Max Preps. That's cool. Because that way, if I can see enough film on a guy, I know what he can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I see who the numbers are in the film. What I do is I sit there and watch it, and I'll write down the numbers, what they ran, what he did, and then I'll go look up the names, and hell, they're, you know, I actually end up learning something. Yeah. It's amazing. They're amazing rigors of technology. So life at Santa Rosa. Now, Falfurius is 2-0 and in that district, and nothing is decided yet. How about Santa Maria and Ben Bolt? Mm, ben Bolt killed Three Rivers. No, Santa Maria lost to Three Rivers, and Ben Bolt is 2-0, 5-3. As I told you, they could be 8-0 easily. So that's not, that's not going to be the most fun for Santa Maria. Mm-hmm. And they're going to try to stay close yeah, and do what they can one. do, but uh, Ben Bolt's very good. Freer at La Villa. All right, La Villa, take a, La Villa took a day off. Uh, Freer lost to Ben Bolt. You see, you remember Rhett Bomar? Yeah. Yeah, from OU, the yeah. cat that went to OU and then Sam Houston State. He actually yeah. had a chance in the pros. He was with a couple of teams, Raiders and Colts maybe. Sold some cars. And, yeah. and, and this guy got you again. So Freer at LaVia. I don't remember the last time LaVia was winless. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking that they may pull an upset against Freer. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and say I think that they're going to come after that week of rest and they've got good kids, good players, and I think that maybe they're going to take out Freer. If not, they'll have to eat more words. And finally, St. Joe starts the gauntlet in yes. their, their tap. <clears throat> was it TCIL or TAPS? I can't remember. <clears throat> what is it? TCIL? 
Or taps. Taps. Just taps. Okay, taps. All right, good. Tap. Yeah. Taps. They're playing Central Catholic. Lost five in a row after two and zero start. They were off last week, but the Buttons have always been a good football team. They will bring some size. So let's just see how St. Joe does. Because it's that three-week gauntlet, man. I don't know. Uh, here's a guy that surprised me, though. You know about Mario Garcia, the big, strong quarter-mile kid number five. If he turns this yes. way and goes, forget it. He's gone. You know about Kai Money. Yeah. Uh, you know about Bernie De La Garza, who, by the way, is third on the team in tackles. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, and first wow. on the season. Look, he's playing his way onto my team. That's mm -hmm. all I got to say. Uh, but I want to tell you about Anthony Cantu, who's a junior. This guy's got 400-plus yards, 101 versus Hidalgo. I guess he kind of caught me by surprise, man. I'll have to ask uh, Philip Money about him, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't remember uh, seeing much of him when I watched him the time I did. But you know what? Him and this kid, Andres Martinez, I remember, and David Rodriguez, a uh, defensive back. It ain't all about those two or three big kids. Oh, by the way, Ricky Miner's got like 40 tackles. He's killing everybody. Like wow. we suggested, he's coming into his own. He's playing his way into shape, and he's starting to make a big difference. They're going to need it against Central, Central Catholic. Don't let the record fool you. At only two and five, I still think that's a pretty good thing. Yeah. But I still think they're going to win. Yeah. And if not, it'll be heartbroken. Yeah. yeah. They, they, uh, need, they need this win. So. Because it's going to get tougher with St. Anthony and that other team, man. Who is it? Uh, Central Catholic, St. Anthony, Antonio. Uh, yeah. Pum, pum, pum. That's yeah. going to be the game. So, But like like Sam and, and Harlingen, you don't want to get look into that last game and stumble over St. Anthony, right? So there are some teams right now, Pioneer among them, San Benito, St. Joe, Rio Hondo, or Raymondville. You you can see the promised land, but don't be like Moses and, and not get there. Remember mm -hmm. that stuff? So, I mean, you got to take it one hill, one mountain at a time. And so three weeks left in the season. I think November 4th is going to be a memorable day, man. But we're not there yet, so let's concentrate on October 20th, 21st, and such. Yeah, if you have a chance, real quick, just uh, we'll put the video up. Um, some great highlights from last week. Uh, I have some more highlights up tonight and tomorrow, um, just like to refresh you for the uh, upcoming week. But uh, you know, real quick story. Earlier in the game, I was at the Pioneer game, and uh, yeah. you know, another photographer got hit in the head with the ball. Funniest, funniest thing I've seen in a long time. Ball got thrown out of bounds. You know, quarterback was throwing it away out of bounds. No. Hey, don't throw it to me. Don't throw it to me. Put the camera in my left hand. Caught one hand on my right. With my You're right. kidding. Yep. Camera never even bobbled. No way. Yep. Nobody he, got it on film. Made me so mad. I need to go to Huddle now and see if I can get it. <laughs> he made the catch. Yeah, yeah leave yeah, it. Yeah, but I'll have that on next week if I can get the highlights from Pioneer. Oh, you mean the dude getting hit? Oh, no, I got that one online already. Yeah, so, man. yeah, Why you have like doing this, man. Yeah, it's you haven't seen it. It's not funny, but, you know. Yeah, it's even in the highlights. I even included Play of the week. Yeah. Play of the week. Oh, it might be number one. That's so, terrible, man. But, uh, yeah, but you have to check back next week. Hey, you know what? Are we going to have, I'm going to put the kiss of death on the whole thing. Are we going to have a rain game this week or not? I don't know. We haven't this year, a, right? Yeah. Remember like three or four years ago yeah. when it rained every damn week and it was yeah. horrible? My camera was wilting over like a lily, you know? But now, I mean, gee, it's 92 degrees today. I, hey, what are these people talking about, man? I, see, the, I, I cannot get the hang of it yet because I'm old school. What are they saying? They, they, they're cool? Yeah, yeah. Nobody's saying I need to get a wig? No, no. <laughs> what they, is they, it? They're, they're, uh, throwing me out, they're throwing out the name of the person that got hit, but I would never Sweet. do that. I'd never yeah. say David Menorah. All right. Uh, so. If I'm going to get a wig, man, I'm going to get me like a Beatles wig. I'm going to look like Paul McCartney. Man. Let me think. I'm going to go Mr. T. <laughs> nah, I've been the fool. All right, hey, cool enough friends. of this stupid stuff, man. Uh, love to see people at the games every week. I'm meeting new people. Uh, Wajardo's dad, Ruben Wajardo at PSA, he was a cool guy, man. He's telling all about his son's baseball exploits. Mm -hmm. And look, he knows, and the family knows, and the coach knows. They just got to hang in there because that team has enough talent. I feel like it's only a matter of time for them. Uh, we're looking at PSA North and Vela as a great game. I think Vets and Rio is going to be a great game. And, you know, even though you may not think so, Rio, Hondo, Raymondville, I don't know, man. We'll see. Yeah. Bobcats are out there saying, no, we're going to kill those guys. And the Bearcats are like, hey, man, maybe we'll do pretty good over there. Yeah. I can't wait to see what the scores are. And uh, as always, Jake, we'll be back next week, and we'll be talking our yakety-yak, man. Yeah. That's it.